When was the last time you went to throw a glass bottle in a bin and heard it shatter into pieces? It's a sound that we hear all too often. But for me, it was start of a journey that would change the way I looked at waste. Hi, my name is Prishita Agarwal, and my journey started near a trash can. Here's a picture of a brunch that I hosted for a few of my friends after a round of midterms. Every friend group has that one friend that loves hosting. For my friends, I'm that friend. It was a fun afternoon catching up over mimosas, but as the sun set that evening, I looked around. Bottles were scattered all over the countertops. I knew it was time to put on the gloves and get cleaning. As I was cleaning and putting these bottles in the blue bin, I heard some of them shatter. Yes, that exact same satisfying shatter. But I could not let it slide. Luckily, I was doing courses on sustainability and circular economy at that time, so my curiosity was at an all-time peak. So I did what any Gen Z here would do and went on Google. Only because ChatGPT wasn't around then. <laughs> what I found was a little shocking. Glass is 100% recyclable. But still, globally, only 21% of all glass bottles get recycled. It frustrated me. Why would we not recycle something that can be recycled endlessly without loss in quality? It made no sense. So I reached out to a few local recycling authorities to understand the problem more in depth. Let me break it down to you in two simple words. Fragile and heavy. In a traditional recycling system, glass is collected with other recyclables. Then it travels long distance to reach recycling plants, where it's sorted, melted, and then blown into new glass bottles. The problem starts at that first step itself when you throw the glass bottle in the bin and it breaks. Unfortunately, even if you meticulously place that glass bottle in the bin, I hate to break it to you, chances are it's going to shatter long before reaching the recycling plant. This not only makes it expensive for the glass itself to be recycled, but it also contaminates other recyclables. If this wasn't bad enough, glass is also heavy compared to other recyclables, such as plastic or tin. This means that it requires higher energy for glass to be transported, and this results in higher carbon emission, defeating the entire purpose of glass recycling itself. That's why, globally, 28 billion glass bottles and jars end up in landfills every year. To give you an idea, that is equivalent to the Empire State Building being filled up every 10 days. I was as shocked by these numbers as you are and decided to do something about it. But as business students, we had no idea what to do. And the easiest way we could find after looking at few YouTube videos was with an at-home glass cutter. So I went on Amazon and purchased a $50 glass cutter. The first time we tried, it took us eight hours to cut a single bottle, and it wasn't even evenly cut. We tried everything from using hot water to cold water to lighter and ice, but nothing seemed to work. We were a little disappointed in ourselves for not being able to use a glass cutting machine that the YouTube videos made seem so easy. But at the same time, we were also reluctant and did not want to give up. So we kept going for uh, several days, more like several weeks. But we started getting a hang of it. And here's a picture I'm super proud of, because it's the first set of glass bottles we ever converted into candles. We were really proud of our creation and excitedly went to our friends to show them these candles. They were as excited as we were and started coming to us with their used glass bottles. That's when we realized that our passion project had turned into something much bigger. What if I told you we found a way to eliminate those 28 billion glass bottles and jars from ending up in landfills? What if I told you we found a way to take every single piece of glass and recycle it without having to travel far from home? Instead of using large facilities, what if I told you there was a way to decentralize this entire process? That's why 
we launched Mosa, named after Mimosa that we had at that branch, with the mission to revolutionize glass waste and to change and to make resource efficiency a norm. Two months after launching, this is what our living room looked like. It was more glass bottles than furniture. We knew it was time to switch out and move out of our dorm room. We needed a space which was close enough to reduce transportation costs and emissions during transportation, but also large enough to be able to store and upcycle all local glass bottles. After weeks of brainstorming, we found that the solution was in this concept called micro factories. So what are micro factories? Micro factories are small, hyper-local, independent manufacturing units. They use technology to take in problematic waste from the local areas and transform them into new high-value products. This not only reduces the need for the neighborhood to bring in more resources, but also makes them self-sufficient. At the Mosa Micro Factory, we take used glass bottles from bars, restaurants, and through local Mosa glass bins, and upcycle them into beautiful-looking home decor products. For example, this shot glass over here. It may look like a regular shot glass and just really fancy, but if you take a closer look, you can actually tell that it's made from a used glass bottle. This is the top of a beer bottle. Using the concept of micro factory, Mosa has been able to upcycle over 6,000 glass bottles locally. To give you an idea again, there are about like 300 of you in this auditorium today, so it's equivalent to each one of you saving 20 glass bottles. And that's with a single micro factory. Now that this model has been proven successful, our goal is to expand through other cities and other localities to exponentially increase our impact. Mosa uses the concept of micro factory to upcycle and repurpose glass bottles. But there are other businesses out there which use the same concept for other materials. Chop Value, for example, uses chopsticks from local restaurants and upcycles them into furniture and tableware. There's another Australian company that takes coffee ground and upcycles that, recycles that into green steel. But what if we're able to take this concept and use that with every other material? Anything from the cup you use for your morning coffee or the brush you use before heading to bed at night can be recycled using this method. Imagine a world where every single piece of material, regardless of how small or seemingly insig insignificant, is repurposed through this method. I'm sharing my story today to show you guys that you do not need to have any specific degree or background to join the circular economy ecosystem. When my friends and I started Mosa, we had no experience or background in manufacturing. We were no designers, environmental engineers, or experts of like any sort. Honestly, very far from it. But what we did have was a shared vision for a world that values resource efficiency, where people viewed resource waste as a resource and not trash. We were simply frustrated with the status quo and the linear approach our society took towards waste. My goal today is to inspire you to view trash as a resource that is untapped and can be repurposed into building a more sustainable future for everyone. I want to remind you that Mosa started with a simple branch over mimosas. That seemingly small, insignificant incident inspired me to take my first sustainable step. And I genuinely believe that you too can find your inspiration anywhere you look. It could be while drinking that morning cup of coffee or while brushing at night. But I just urge you to take your first sustainable step. And if you don't know where, maybe even start by throwing your glass bottles in a Mosa bin. My journey started near a trash can. Yours can too. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>